everyone, it's your favorite reliability and test guy, and I'm here to share another video with you. This current video is on test sequencing. I hope you like this video, and if you do, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Alright, let's get started. In this video, we are going to cover an introduction to test sequencing, understanding how to allocate and sequence a set of tests. Again, my name is Tom Resch, and if you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support. Today we're going to learn about test sequencing definitions, how to sequence tests, and how to document and capture the test sequence plan. Below is a high level summary that highlights the process from requirement to end results in reporting. In this video, we cover one of the components of the verification and validation plan step test sequencing. Now let's go ahead and define a test sequence. A test sequence is a series of tests organized into test legs where each test is strategically prioritized based on maximizing learnings for the design and for new failure mode identification. What do I mean by new failure mode identification? Well, when we subject a product, subsystem, or component to a series of stresses or test conditions, we can uncover additional failure modes that would not be captured by each condition independently with separate test specimens or test units. Let's go ahead and define a test leg. A test leg is a branch from the test plan tree that contains a series of tests. As you can see in the flow diagram, a test leg is the identifier for an organized sequence of tests. You can have one test leg or many test legs, which are all part of the test and program or test tree for the product. What are some of the pros and cons for sequencing tests? Well, some of the pros include test sequences reduce testing costs by reducing the number of test specimens required to execute a test plan. Also, it, as we previously discussed, it helps you identify failure modes that would not occur if tests were ran independently with different test specimens. A negative aspect is that test sequencing and sequencing too many tests in a series will increase the amount of time required to complete the test plan. So keep that in mind when you're sequencing tests not to add too many tests to a test leg or you could end up with a significant amount of time required to complete your testing. Another comment here, which isn't really a con or a negative, but a pitfall to keep in mind, is that if you are running a series of tests that are testing for condition to or past the operational life of the product, the compounded accelerated stresses can cause a false indicator of a weak design, which could result in added costs and over design of your product. Accelerated tests are often based on assumptions and compounding these assumptions by performing multiple life tests can provide false results into the robustness and production worthiness of your product. Careful consideration and thought should be put into your test sequence before you start piling on a bunch of reliability, endurance, and durability tests into a single test leg sequence. A quick note, whenever possible, Critical conditions should first be tested independently with separate test specimens. Now what this means is that for a safety and major functions of your product, you should run at least one sample initially to determine if your product meets your product's requirements for critical test conditions before running these tests in a sequence. This is all part of the test early, fail early, learn early mentality that is upheld by successful and thriving companies. Now that we've defined a test leg and a test sequence, let's go ahead and define a test sequence plan. A test sequence plan is a tree that contains a set of test legs or test branches and captures all validation, reliability, safety, and regulatory and compliance testing that will be performed on a product. Now I have to be careful with this statement and a quick note, uh, depending on what your company's needs and requirements are, you might break up your test sequence plans into separate documents for validation, reliability, safety, and regulatory and compliance. I do recommend, however, no matter how you wanna capture this independently for these activities, 
to, to go ahead and compile all of your test legs into an overall test and tree so that your company has a high level understanding of all of the different types of tests that need to be performed on your product before it can be shipped and, and, and sold to customers. In this example, we have determined 20 tests that we want to perform on a product. Recall that one option is to run these tests independently with separate test units. However, this can be costly, especially when running a reliability and confidence sampling plan. Instead, we want to group these tests into test legs and reduce material costs, test costs, and maximize learnings on our design due to compounded stresses or test conditions. Let's go ahead and take these 20 tests and allocate and prioritize each test into test legs. Here is the test sequence plan we have developed for our product, which captures the test legs and sequence for the 20 tests we want to perform on our product. The question you probably have at this point is how do I determine the prioritization of each test? In the next slide, we're going to learn how to prioritize and sequence tests. So let's get to it. So how do we sequence tests? Number one, include pre-test and post-test visual inspections, functional tests, baselines, and other types of checkpoints to check for degradation of the test specimen through a test sequence. Do not wait until the end of a test leg to see if your test specimens or test units failed. I can't stress this point enough. Make sure that you have checkpoints between before and after tests to make sure that your product is still operational and has not degraded from a test or a test sequence. Number two, save destructive and high fatigue durability type tests for the end of a test sequence. Number three, perform tests that cause mechanical fatigue before temperature cycling tests. Number four, Keep pre-testing for regulatory, compliance, and certification testing separate from validation and reliability tests. Number five, whenever possible, combine environments to both simulate real-world conditions and reduce test time. Number six, tests that involve high altitude or vacuum environments should be performed before moisture and other ingress type testing. Number seven, Prioritize critical conditions that need to be tested and ran first. Number eight, non-critical conditions and long duration tests should be saved for last. Topic item number one can be included in your test sequence or captured as a pre and post test in each of the test procedures you will create for executing your tests. To minimize the visual size of your test legs and to make it easier for others to review, I would suggest covering pre and post testing in your test procedure only. However, I want to emphasize item number one to ensure that you are thinking about how you will track the health and performance of your product by performing a before and after test comparison to see if there are any changes in your product's behavior. The reason for the point made in item number three is that you can learn a lot about your design based on the order you sequence tests especially in the case of vibration and temperature cycling. In some scenarios, you can induce or bring to the surface mechanical fatigue failures by running a vibration test first, then temperature cycling on your product after performing the vibration test. Item number five, an important point to keep in mind here, as you can reduce test time and create more realistic test conditions by combining different environments and mechanical stresses into a single test using combined environment test equipment. Items seven and eight emphasize the importance of learning quickly on your product by placing critical items in the front end of your test sequence whenever possible. Now that we have learned about some of the core concepts for sequence and tests, let's discuss how to document or capture our test sequence. So how do we document or capture the test sequence plan? The first method is to use a flow diagram, which visually presents the sequence of testing for each test leg. We already took a look at an example of a flow diagram when we defined the test tree. But as you can see, the flow diagram is a great visual tool to show others your plan for sequence and test for your product. 
A downside to the flow diagram is the amount of detail for each test is limited without making the diagram less legible and more convoluted by adding additional details about each test such as duration, dates, and requirements into your flow diagram. So what is a great way to visually represent our test sequence plan and add additional details about each test? By creating a test sequence table. A tabular sequence view allows us to have more content and details presented in a legible format for others to see our plan for test sequencing. The table example here just shows an example of some of the fields you can you could present. However, you can add as many columns as desired to capture additional details. Also, it is recommended to have a clear separation of each test leg in your table. So which method should you use? Personally, I recommend documenting your test sequence plan in both a flow diagram and a tabular format. This way you have a high level view and format for presenting how the test will be sequenced and the tabular format for highlighting more details surrounding each test in your test sequence or test plan. Let's review some of the key takeaways from this video. Number one, have a pre and post checkpoint before each test in a sequence. Number two, prioritize tests based on maximizing design learnings to find new failure modes. Number three, perform combined testing to simulate real world conditions and reduce testing time. Number four, save destructive tests for the end of a test sequence or test leg. Think about how you want to present and organize your test sequences. Please keep in mind that this is just a guideline, an intro into test sequencing. Developing a successful test program requires experience, so if your company needs help or support, feel free to reach out to me in one of the links in the description below. A huge point I want to get across in all of my videos is that you only have one shot at protecting and increasing the brand equity of your company. So validation and reliability test plans require significant planning and thought in order to launch a successful product, both from a design validation and production validation perspective. As both how you design and how you build your product are imperative parts in ensuring a robust and reliable product. Thank you YouTubers for watching this video. And once again, if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I hope you stick around for the rest of the videos of my channel. And there's plenty of new content coming, and I will be updating weekly. Thank you again for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.